Hey Go-Getters, it's me, Miss McCarthy, and I wanted to thank you for joining me on this episode of Taking on the Fast, your 15-day countdown guide to Florida's Fast Map Assessment. Before we dive in, let me quickly remind you of your big three tips for this practice session and when you take the Fast Map Assessment. Number one, read the problem carefully and make sure that you answer all parts of the problem. Number two, use scratch paper to show your journey, also known as showing your work, but journey sounds a little more fun. Showing your journey is huge, y'all, because it increases the chances that you'll arrive at the correct answer. And if you realize that you're making a mistake somewhere, it allows you to backtrack and figure out where you made that mistake. And number three, dig deep and give it your best. You cannot control what the questions are going to look like, but the one thing that you can control is the effort that you throw down. So give it everything you've got. Today, the next day, really every day, and especially on test day. Now that we've got those big three locked in, it is time for you to press pause and work out these problems. Then when you're ready, come on back to check your work. I'll see you soon. Welcome back, go-getters. Let's see how you did. Now, I'm about to show you my journey for how I went about solving these answers, and this may look a little bit different or quite similar to what you have. That's okay, because that's the cool thing about math. There's more than one way to arrive at the correct answer. So without further ado, let's get to it and let's do this thing. This first question is a multi-select question. So we need to make sure that we're selecting all the correct answers, all right? This one says to select all the statements that are true. So what I did was I took all of these statements here and I brought them to my paper to show my journey, show my thinking on paper. Um, there's a lot going on here, so it really helps to break it down. So for the first one, we've got 46 thousandths is one hundredth the value of 46 hundredths. So 46 thousandths is one hundredth of 46 hundredths. Well, when I multiply, when I found one hundredth of 46 hundredths, that would actually be this number, which does not match, okay? So I said no. In the second one, we've got 46 thousandths is one-tenth of the value of 46 hundredths. 46 thousandths on this side is one-tenth of 46. That would be bumping each digit back one place to get 46 thousandths. So yes, that is a correct answer and I'll mark it at the end. Four and six tenths is 10 times the value of 46 hundredths. Bring it down. Four and six tenths is 10 times the value of 46 hundredths. When I multiplied 10 times 46 hundredths, I got four and six tenths, which matched the other side of the equation. So yes to that one. We have 46 is one-tenth the value of 460. 46 is one-tenth of 460. That would be 46, and both sides of the equation are equal, so yes. There we go. And the last one, 460 is one-thousandth the value of 46 hundredths. 460 is one-thousandth of 46 hundredths. And that would be this number right here, creating a number that is 1,000 times less. So no, that's not the right answer. So we're looking for the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. Make sure I transfer everything up to my answers and lock them in. The second one, the third and the fourth. The third and the fourth. Pause the video to jot down your notes and when you're ready, press play to continue. This next problem is an equation editor problem. So we're using the equation editor tool to punch in our answer. It's not a calculator. It's actually where we can input our answer. So this one says that Ben buys 250 video games for $21 each. Then he purchases 30 board games for $15 each. How much more did he spend on video games than on board games? So what I did first was I said, okay, we've got 250 video games that cost $21 each, which equals 
$5,250 that he spent on video games. Now he's got 30 board games that cost $15 each. When we multiply those out, that's $450 spent on board games. Then I took those two values and I subtracted them. 5,250 minus 450 equals $4,800. So that is how much more he spent on video games than on board games, which is what the question is asking. So when I go to do that, there is no comma button, but I will tap the four, eight, and the zero two times. So then you should see four, eight, zero, zero, just like that. Remember, no comma when you're using the equation editor tool. That little dot right there is a decimal point, much different than a comma. So just four, eight, zero, zero, lock it in. Go ahead and pause the video to take down your notes that you need to take, and then when you're ready, press play. This problem is the matching item problem of the day. And it says to match the each, well mine says to match the each, it should be match each division expression with its equivalent value. I will fix it so you don't see that typo right there, but match each division expression with its equivalent value. So we have 10 divided by three. And I said, okay, 10 divided by three is the same thing as 10 thirds, which can also be written as three and one third. So I will select three and one third. For eight divided by three, that is the same thing as eight thirds. We can rewrite that as two holes and two thirds. So two holes and two thirds. And then finally we have 11 divided by three, which would be 11 thirds, or as a mixed number, three and two thirds. So go all the way over and match it up with the three and two thirds. And that is how you would solve this one. So pause the video to take down your notes. And when you're ready, press play. This next problem is an editing task problem. It says to complete the statement about the triangle below to make it true. It says the triangle above is a or an acute, obtuse, or right triangle. Well, right here, I spot one obtuse angle, so it must be an obtuse triangle. And is it equilateral, scalene, or isosceles? And I took my paper and I measured each side, noticing that they were three different sides, so this would be a scalene. It's obtuse and scalene. And these little buttons right here, you would just press those to drop down your menu and select your answer, just like I've done here. Pause the video to make any notes that you still need to make, and when you're ready, press play. Here is our multiple choice question, and it says that Noah has a regular carpet that has a length of three and two tenths meters and a width of 463 centimeters. What is the area of the carpet? Finding the area. I know that the area is the length times the width. So what I did was I said the length right here is three and two tenths meters. The width right here was 463 centimeters, two different units. So I had to convert one to make them the same. I converted three and two tenths times 100 to get 320 centimeters. Then I know to find the area, I had to multiply the length times the width. So that is 463 times 320, or the other way around is fine too. You could have done 320 times 463. That's the commutative property of multiplication. And when I multiplied using the standard algorithm, I got the answer of 148,160. So let's go see, and that should be in square centimeters. And I do have a match right here, C. Pause the video to jot down any notes that you still need to make, and when you're ready, press play. Our final question today for day one is the graphic response item display question. Now for these, it looks like we're going to be clicking on the number line, but let's read it. It says that the lengths in inches of eight insects are shown in the table. So we've got eight insects shown right in here. Click above the number line to create a line plot showing the lengths of the insects. So we can see it's between three and four 
And down here will be our fractions, which would be three and one fourth, three and two fourths, or three and a half, and three and three fourths. So what I did was I took the data off the table and I wrote it in order just like here. Okay, and what I'm going to do is mark or click, pretend to click on the number line here to show a line plot. So we've got three, put an X in three, three and one fourth. We have two three and a halves, so two over three and a half. Three and three fourths, we have four pieces of data there. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so that is what your line plot should have looked like. Pause the video to jot down any notes that you still need to make, and when you're ready, press play. Thanks again for joining me on this episode of Taking on the Fast. Before we go, let me remind you that practice is not something we do once we're good. It's the one thing we do that makes us good. And there's still time for you to practice and get these skills locked in. And a great way to do that is to join me on some of my video lessons on Taking on the Best. I'll see you next time, go-getters. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it.